Okay, so here I am out at the squash bed again, the zucchini bed. Seems like I'm doing a lot of videos, or I guess this is actually the third video that I've done on zucchini this year. And it seems like zucchini, I mean, normally that's uh, something that a beginner gardener would start with a lot of times is summer squash, tomatoes, cucumbers. And it seems like, why is there so many things you need to know about zucchini? You know, pruning, the male flower thing, and now today we're going to talk about squash bugs. So, if you are a new gardener, or even if you have been gardening for most of your life, and you have grown summer squash, you have probably, in most cases, had to deal with squash bugs and how awful they are. Uh, they will very quickly decimate your crop if you cannot stay ahead of them. So I wanted to cover today a couple of quick things on what you can do. Uh, so number one, you want to look for the eggs, the little patches or clutches or whatever they're called of eggs. And they are a bronze colored patch that you will see on your leaves and they can be either on the top of the leaves or the underside. A lot of times if they're on the underside of the leaves, they'll be kind of nestled like in between where two veins come up. Um, normally they're in like patches of probably 8, 12, 15, 20, I think it really depends. I, I've uh, seen all amounts. They're kind of hard when you mess with them. Uh, you know, when you pick them off, they're, they're kind of crunchy. They're not like slimy or, or they don't feel gross really. Um, so let's talk about first removing the eggs. You want to check your summer squash leaves every single day because they will lay almost, you'll probably find them every single day once you have some squash bugs that show up in your garden. Um, you want to check both the tops and the undersides of the leaves. Here's a quick way to remove them. So one thing you can do to get rid of the eggs, uh, you can scrape them off with your hands, with your fingers, just scrape them off. They're, they're kind of hard and you can just like pinch them between your fingers. Um, but another way, I've got this fancy duct tape here. There's any duct tape I can find. This is like Tiger King duct tape. <laughs> but anyway, what you can do is wrap some around your hands like so. A bigger duct tape would probably work better for this. <laughs> but uh, put some duct tape around your, your hands and then got the eggs here. If you just kind of rub or touch on them, on the eggs. You don't want to do it too hard because you'll tear up your leaves. So look at that. I can get it in focus there. All the eggs just stick to the duct tape. Um, and then you can get rid of the tape. Okay, so now that you're checking your squash eggs, or your squash, <laughs> Not, not the squash eggs, but <laughs> once you're checking your squash plants for the egg patches every day and, and you're removing them, that's a really good chance that you are going to prevent a large portion of a problem because they tend to only have one cycle per season. So if you can keep up with the eggs and get them wiped out, then you should be pretty good. It's not like they're going to keep reinfesting in the same season. Although, because squash bugs will fly from miles around to get to your squash plants, you will probably be combating it most this season, but you will prevent a larger infestation. Uh, the larger bugs look a lot like stink bugs, except for once they spread their wings and fly, they are pretty quick. You'll see it's like an orangish, reddish marking. I didn't get that on the video clip, um, but I'll see if I can include a picture here to kind of show you what it looks like. Uh, ways to keep them off your plants organically. One, you can just try to catch them by hand. Um, that's what I've been doing most of the time. 
I'll walk around my plants every day and I find them uh, mainly on my zucchini plants. They really prefer summer squash and like pumpkins. Um, there are some squash plants that seem to be more resistant to them. Like I haven't really noticed them on my butternut squash or my uh, honey boat squash, which are winter squash. They seem to, I mean, I see a couple here and there, but I've not found any egg patches over there. They, they have tend to mostly stuck to my zucchini. Um, but I also had them get into my Kajari melons last year. They'll get on cucumber plants. I mean, there's, you know, any of those types in the, in those types of families, they will feast on if they can. Um, so you can catch the adults by hand. And even if you have, uh, you know, a patch of eggs that ends up hatching, um, you can catch the nymphs by hand. They, they look similar to the adults. They're just much smaller. They're kind of a gray color. Um, one way that you can attract them is at night. If you put a board down, uh, like in the bottom of your bed, they'll kind of gather under the board. If you come out really early in the morning, lift up that board, and you can kind of squish them all and catch them all in one spot instead of trying to grab them one by one, especially because they, they'll fly away if they, whenever they can. Um, another way that you can do it is uh, spray your plants, the leaves. You want to avoid the flowers, but um, spray the leaves with a, a neem oil mixture. Um, neem oil is an organic uh, spray or, or organic uh, product that you can use. It comes from the neem tree. It's an oil that will only affect uh, the insects that eat it. So in many cases, or in most cases, it's not going to affect the good bugs because generally the good bugs are not feasting on your plant leaves. Um, so, but you want to keep it off the flowers because you don't want the bees and other pollinators to, to get it in there. So you would have to do more of a concentrated spraying with if you're using neem oil. And it would also take regular applications because anytime it rains or even dew and stuff, eventually it's going to come off. So it's something that you would probably have to keep up with on a weekly basis. Uh, another option is to use like just water and a couple of drops of dish soap, like Dawn dish soap. Same thing, apply it to the leaves every couple of days. And in many cases that will help deter them. Uh, companion planting is another thing. Now what I did this year to try was I planted dill because dill especially dill flowers attracts uh, parasitic wasps which eat the eggs however um, I have some very nice little patches of dill here on either side of my zucchini but I have yet to see any parasitic wasps so while it's great that I'm going to get some dill that I can use in different recipes so far, it has not attracted the bugs uh, that I have noticed anyway that, that eat the eggs. And today alone, I probably scraped off, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 maybe patches of eggs. And that was just a day. I've done it on multiple cases each day this week. Um, and then whenever I can see or, or catch a adult squash bug, I grab it, I throw it on the ground which will kind of disorient it for a minute and I just squish it. So, um, so the Dawn dish soap and some water, neem oil spray, again, both these you, you'll have to apply regularly and you only want it on the leaves, not on the flowers. Uh, companion planting, the dill. Now I did read something today that nasturtiums are a very good companion plant around uh, your summer squash to help deter uh, the squash bugs. I, I, I'm guessing they don't like the smell or something of the nasturtiums. So I think I might try that next year. I did grow some nasturtiums last year, but I didn't have it near my squash. Uh, but nasturtium is a very pretty flower. It's edible. You can eat both the leaves and the flowers. They use them a lot of times like as accents to salads and whatnot in the fancy, pantsy restaurants. Um, but they kind of have a uh, like a peppery flavor to them. Um, and they're vining, so they will, you know, you want to make sure you give them room around your squash, but uh, I certainly am going to try that next year to see if that keeps more of the squash bugs away. Um, but you can, you can try the dill and see if it, if it gets some in. I mean, all this stuff you're going to get benefits from because you can eat the dill. The dill smells wonderful. Um, and nasturtiums smell good, and the, uh, 
they have very pretty flowers and, and you can eat them as well. So, you know, you're still going to be getting other crops around them, even if they don't do all the things that um, have worked for other gardeners, um, you, you're still going to get a benefit out of it. Uh, but really, the, the best thing that I've found is, is just trying to keep up with the egg patches. They, the, the eggs will hatch within one to two weeks. I think a 10 days is about the average. So if you can keep up with getting all those egg patches out and preventing like another big batch of squash bugs from hatching and the nymphs all just feeding off of your plants, um, you'll be way ahead of the game. Squash bugs also, uh, they carry um, a disease that will infect your plants. I think it's called yellow vine decline. Um, so basically they will inject the toxin into your plants when they're eating them and, and they, they uh, well, no, I'm sorry. They, they suck the sap out of your leaves is what they do when they're eating them and then the leaves die off and eventually if, if it goes too far, it will kill off your plant. Um, but during that process, while they're eating their plant, they can also pass on this yellow vine decline. So they can do multiple things besides just eating the crap out of your plants. They can also add a disease to it, which will then kill off your plants. So uh, it's something that you will want to keep up with. Um, so get them egg patches and you'll be ahead of the game. Um, and then just find whatever works for you, whether it's the neem oil, the dish soap, or just catch them every single day whenever you can and squishing them. You know, any of those things will help. So, hope you found this video helpful. I hope the squash bugs are not destroying your summer squash and that you can keep ahead of them. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and, and uh, I will try to answer as quickly as possible. And please subscribe to our channel. And I guess that's about it. Hope you're having a great day. Namaste.